What up guys, it's Dom and welcome back to the channel. So this is my very first movie review and I am kind of doing the same thing as Mr. Majoritarian is doing. It's my friend Alex. I'll leave his channel in the description below. Definitely go check him out. But either way, today's movie is Beautiful Disaster. Beautiful Disaster, released in 2023, written and directed by Roger Cumble. But let's just get into the 10 essential aspects of a movie. Plot. Does the movie follow a comprehensive story arc and is plausible within the world that has been created? I definitely think so. It's like all romantic comedies. It's pretty easy to follow along. Just towards the end of the movie, they introduced this whole family aspect to it. And I didn't really agree with that. It, if they left the whole romantic comedy through the whole movie, it would have probably been for the better. Next is attraction. Does the movie have an interesting premise with a high entertainment value? I definitely think so. Now I know not everyone loves the romantic comedy type movie, but I honestly don't mind it. I like a lot of movies that are under that umbrella. Now, me personally, some of my favorite scenes in this movie were the fight scenes, which is yes, it's, it's a romantic comedy. Why are there fight scenes? It just works. It worked with the movie. It fit the story perfectly. And honestly, those were some of the best scenes. So I'm not mad about it. Next is theme. What message or truth is the movie trying to convey? Now, Beautiful Disaster doesn't really have a main message or truth. I think the closest would be with the family aspect of it, that you can't really always trust family members, especially if they abandoned you. But other than that, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a romance movie, so anything with the relationships would do. Next is dialogue. Is there a real feel to the conversations? Absolutely. I mean, the two main characters, Travis and Abby, they sound exactly like two college kids just flirting. It, it felt extremely real. And honestly, if I went to any campus and this situation would happen, it would sound exactly like that. Next is acting. Are the characters convincing? I mean, as I was just saying in dialogue, they did a great job with these characters. Virginia Gardner plays Abby and Dylan Sprouse plays Travis. And they did a phenomenal job, honestly. Next is cinematography. Is there a creative use of lighting, setting, and wardrobe to convey emotion? Now, I wouldn't say through the whole movie, but like I was talking about earlier, the fight scenes, it straight up feels like a fight club run by college kids. Like that, the scene was perfect. The way they were dressed was perfect. The lighting was insane. Though, again, that's why those are my favorite scenes in the movie because they did a great job of that. Next is editing. This is all about the pacing of the movie. So the movie is an hour and 36 minutes long. And like I said in the plot, most of the movie was honestly, it was good. The ending with the, with the extra aspect that was added with the family, honestly, that could have been removed. I still think this movie is a good length. An hour and 36 is fair. Maybe an hour 20 would be better, but if they removed that one bit from the movie, it probably would have been for the better. Next is soundtrack. Now, I don't think this movie has a good soundtrack because if there was one, I don't remember it. I've watched it twice, zero recollection. Next is directing. Now, Roger Cumble directed a bunch of movies. Most of his notable ones are in the early 2000s, like The Sweetest Thing, Cruel Intentions, and Just Friends. Now, I didn't know this until doing my research, but he directed 12 episodes of Suits. It's one of my favorite shows. but. I never watched any of his more notable movies, so I really couldn't say if they're good or not. But I mean, Beautiful Disaster was pretty good, so I should probably check them out. Next is time. Does it stand the test of time? Now, it's hard to say because this movie did just come out last year, but I mean, they made a sequel the following year, so it was good enough to make a sequel. And honestly, it does depend on the person watching it. Because again, if you don't like romantic comedies, this isn't going to stand any time for you. Now to the review section. So the Rotten Tomato critics gave it a 25%. Rotten Tomatoes audience gave it a 55%. And IMDb gave it a 5.3 out of 10. Honestly, I probably have to agree with Rotten Tomatoes audience for 55. Because again, I, I was saying the whole video is a hit or miss movie. So that makes more sense. 25 is way too low for this movie. Like it's not, it's, it's at least enjoyable to watch. Like even if, even if you're not really into the type, like I wouldn't give it a 25%.
Now on to the rankings. So this is the very first movie I reviewed. So first in 2023, first in the 2020s, and first in all time. Obviously, that's going to change once I get some better and worse movies. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And make sure to leave a comment for what movie you want me to review next. Peace out.